All right. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Strong, Fit and Free podcast. I'm your host, Alessia. And today I am joined by an amazing personal trainer and coach, Jonathan. And I'm so excited and thrilled to have him on the podcast today to actually tackle a subject that is very, almost taboo and not talked about and very much something that I'm super interested in. And since my podcast is aimed at women, I felt like I didn't want to neglect the men and I wanted to kind of share this um, topic with you guys. So um, if you're a male and you're experiencing body image issues, you're definitely not alone. Um, however, body image issues are generally associated and exclusively in the domain of women, but the truth is that men can and do also have body image issues. And in today's kind of pop culture landscape and social media, it's filled to the brim with these superheroes and jacked men on magazines and social media. And it shouldn't be surprising that as a fitness professional, it's becoming more noticeable to me that men also struggle with this body image issues and it's rarely talked about today. So today I invited Jonathan onto the podcast so we can chat about the research behind body image in men and some common fears and common issues that men run into and maybe some share some tips and strategies that will help men take more um, ownership of their feelings towards this topic and um, stop battling in silence. So hey Jonathan, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I don't know how amazing I, am, but I appreciate the, the intro. Oh, I, yeah. I found it really funny and actually kind of peculiar that as you were giving me that intro, the only thing that I could think of that was running through my mind, because we didn't go over this before we started, was are we recording video? And then secondary, how uh, am I wearing like a tight enough shirt? <laughs> and do I have enough of my upper body showing? Do I, am I looking good enough on camera? It's, it's funny, as you were talking about that, that's all I could, that's all I could think of. Did you have like so, a little panic attack and you're like, oh, no, I'm, sure if I'm good it, enough right now? <laughs> not, not necessarily that, but it just, it yeah. just reminds me of like the, the topic at hand is that, you know, men do have issues with how they look and men do have a lot of issues with how they look. It's very common. And I think in preparing for this podcast, I did some research on the subject because I didn't want to come at it from in an entirely anecdotal and ignorant perspective mm -hmm. where I didn't know anything about other people's or kind of the data at large about this. And it, it seems like one of the most interesting things that I came across was that men, men don't actually seem, I, I, see, I think people think that women have a higher case rate of finding themselves, you know, poor body image issues or finding themselves unattractive. But one of the earliest studies I could actually find was one from 1987, where they talked about um, men's body image issues and the fact that like, it was 85%, it was men versus women's body issues and 85% of women wanted to lose weight versus only 40% of men wanted to lose weight. Or maybe it was 45%. But when you added up the number of men who wanted to gain weight with the number of men who wanted to lose weight, it was equal to the number of women who had problems with their weight. So I think what the takeaway from that is that men and women have both have large amounts of body image issues, but men tend to have a more larger variety in terms of the things that they are dissatisfied. Like men have, a, men are more dissatisfied about more things about themselves than women wow. are. Wow, that is so interesting. That is just incredible. And I love that you've kind of gone in and, and done a little bit of the research and, and looked into kind of those percentages. Um, before we start actually talking about kind of like, um, you know, your, your take on the subject, I'd love to know, like, tell us a little bit about you, you know, where you're from, what got you into the industry and how you help your people and how, what your take on body image is at, from a personal perspective before we get into like the, the helping client side. Yeah. So I, before we go any further, I need to know, are, are we recording video? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we are. Oh man. But, I should have wore I should have wore a tighter shirt. No, I love I love the shirt. It's like bright and and, and really nice and, and uh fun. Um but yeah, this is mostly gonna be audio, however you you know you might take it and put it onto your YouTube if you want to. But yes, your wonderful face is on show. <laughs> oh man. Okay, so 
yeah, so about me, let's see. I started out, so I was born in the USA, like Bruce Springsteen would say. And um, I'm 29 years old right now. I'm originally from a small town called Kunkeltown, Pennsylvania that has about 1,000 residents. If you look on Wikipedia, it says we have a lot more, but I'm, I'm sure that number is wrong. And now, currently, I live in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. I moved here in 2015 to get married to my wife, who I've been married to for five years now. I did get the number right. Five years. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I started, actually, I changed careers when I moved here. And I decided to become a personal trainer because health and fitness had, throughout my entire life, I was always kind of like the guy who was the gym guy. I started working out when I was nine years old. I actually start, I always tell people this story. I, I've told it to a lot of people. I started exercising when I was nine years old with my mom, actually. My mom was recovering from breast cancer at the time. And her doctor told her that she should do some workouts and she should do some exercising. So I remember we used to do, we used to watch these old eighties exercise VHS tapes um, on like the, an old, like, uh, you know, box TV. And we used to do like these leg lifts and like glute bridges and all this modified pushups. And, you know, that's how I started getting my, uh, my, my toe, dip my toe into fitness. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of expanded, you know, as I got older, I got more into uh, strength training, I competed in powerlifting twice. I was actually in preparation for a strongman competition in um, March before uh, COVID happened, it got canceled, obviously, and uh, there's no signs of another one happening yet. So I'll, I'll keep you posted on that. <laughs> and now I run, now I run my own uh, Instagram, YouTube, uh, Facebook, and a podcast. My Instagram is Johnny Reps Fitness. It's J O N N Y underscore R E P S underscore Fitness. My uh, Facebook is the same. My YouTube is just Johnny Reps, and uh, my podcast is called Strength for All. And Love that. it's thanks. It's it's on uh, iTunes, Spotify, all of your podcasting platforms. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's basically the synopsis of me <laughs> so yeah, far in the industry. That. Amazing. And um, what, what kind of attracted you to um, body image and what, what, what aspect of body image in males do you find um, you relate to the most? So I don't do a lot of, uh, you know, what's, what's interesting is I actually work most of my clients are actually women, like a large percentage of my clients are women. And I think actually this, this kind of relates to body image because men will not train with a guy who's, you have to be a lot more jacked than them for them to actually take you seriously. <laughs> so uh, like I couldn't even imagine having a, cl a male client who's like, that is like more Jack than I like if I don't male, they wouldn't train with me. That's just, yeah. it, it just is. It's like that. It, it's just, it's almost like an assumed given in the fitness mm -hmm. industry that in order for anyone to take you seriously as a guy, you need to be like obscenely jacked. It's yeah. crazy, but it's, well, you, you, yeah, you need, it needs to be either, you need to either be really jacked or really strong. Yeah. And I'm neither. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not, I'm never going to go anywhere. I'm never going to go far. Come on. No, <laughs> that can't be true. But I totally understand where you're coming from. I mean, it's not so much with women. Um, it's still like, I think there's still that, that, that feeling with women wanting you to obviously have a trainer that is, you know, looks the part, but, um, you know, trainers that maybe are overly ripped women trainers that are overly ripped can sometimes be also intimidating to other women, but I can't imagine how much more that is in men for sure. Um, well, yeah. I actually had an interesting point that's related to this. So I was doing another thing I came across, uh, was a paper uh, that showed men actually tend to have a higher bias against all in favor of themselves, but also against themselves when it comes to body image. So mm -hmm. what that means is that men see an ideal, I believe in the study, what they did was they took the man's face and put it on like different body types, right? Mm -hmm. And men tended to have a more positive response when they saw their own face on a jacked physique. And they would have a more negative response when they would see their, see their own face on like a, what they would consider a not ideal physique. So men generally would have, it's, it seems the, the, the conclusions they came to from this study was that men kind of seem to more highly value an ideal physique than women for themselves, but they also seem to be more harsh on themselves if they did not have a, uh, a what they considered a good physique. 
Mm, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And it's actually very surprising. I mean, the research is, is just so interesting. You just never really read about it. And, and I'd love to know kind of like, where did you find this research? Did you kind of have to really dig deep? Um, was it um, th these kinds of studies, were they done with people within the fitness industry, athletes, or just gen pop or general population clients? Like, I'd love to know a little bit about kind of where to find this research. Yeah, so all the stuff I, I'm, ta I'm quoting is all from Na the National Institute of Health. I think the three best sources to get like scholarly research is our, uh, well, I, Google Scholar, uh, PubMed, and National Institute of Health is usually where I get this stuff from. The, this, this particular study was, I believe it was in male and female college students, uh, if I'm not mistaken. I have several of them that I was, I was looking at, so I don't want to confuse the names of yeah, them. Yeah. Um, yeah, on shame. Yeah. But I think this one, uh, there a lot of the times, you know, it's really hard to actually find people doing studies on the fitness industry because we're kind of like a niche and mm -hmm. people don't take us very seriously a lot of the time. Wow. <laughs> so uh, there, particularly studies done on people who are actually like in the industry or people who are actually like well-trained are kind of exceedingly rare in most fields, which, you know, it is what it is but most of these I would assume they're either done on college from what I've read what I looked at in the study they were either done on college age students or the general population yeah okay good um and I mean kind of interested in you know from your perspective since you are in the fitness industry you are a man and do you struggle with these body image you know body image issues and what was I mean? Tell us a little bit about like your experiences growing up and how you know how the fitness has shaped your perception of your own body image. Well, I always I said I always say like nowadays I'm like come on, for, uh, look at me. I obviously don't care how I look. So, so <laughs> that's that's the the first thing I always say, uh, jokingly about these things. But like okay, when I was growing up, I was not. I was not what I would consider in shape. I, so most of the time when I, despite I started exercising pretty young, but most of my, my childhood, I was not what you would consider fit. I didn't really participate in athletics. I mean, I was in gym class and everything, but I was, I was, I wasn't like last pick, but I was, I, I didn't even have, I wasn't even memorable enough to be the last pick person in gym class. I was usually like near the end, but not quite last. <laughs> and I was in chess club. I never had, I think may, most of that was, I didn't understand the importance that diet had in, you know, having a lean physique. I didn't understand the importance of that. So at the time, I kind of, my internal mentality of it was like, all these people look so much better than me. There must be something wrong with me. I'm like, there's, I have a problem. I'm faulty. Like, and I always thought like, you know, just do more sit-ups and you'll get abs. And I, I didn't understand the actual, how it works about it. And I had a really, I had a really negative self-image. And I think that probably carries over even to now. Like I think of myself, I look at myself in the mirror all the time and I'm like, I obviously I, I'm in, I'm in decent shape, I think. But like, I look at myself in the mirror and I think I look terrible a lot of times. And I think it's really dependent on your emotional state on the day to day basis that sometimes you'll just look at yourself and think you, you think you look great. You think you look amazing. And then other times you'll look at yourself and you'll be like, yeah, I look like shit. <laughs> I don't know if I can say shit, but I said it. <laughs> so, <laughs> you, can, you can swear on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I think the other thing for men is you have a very, there's no one, it's hard to find anyone to talk to about this. Like even mm. you talk to your own wife or you talk to your own friends. I've actually found like some friends are very supportive about this type of thing. Uh, if, if you really just talk to them, but getting the conversation initiated is very awkward because there's not really like, as far as I know, there's very few outlets for men to really even discuss this out there. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there should be more. I don't know if there should be less. I'm, I don't know if my experience is actually even right that this is how it is, but I, just from what I've seen, it doesn't, it seems like getting the conversation started with men because there's, you, you know, there's a lot of uh, body image acceptance stuff out there. And I, the vast majority of everything I've ever seen is always related to women, yeah. right? 
so I don't know if body image for men is, is a larger problem. I don't know if it's a smaller problem. I don't know if it's an equal problem, but I do know that it definitely exists. And I do know that it seems kind of difficult to get the conversation started. And I guess that's just kind of why I'm here. Yeah, <laughs> that's no, why I, I'm on this podcast. Yeah, like I totally agree because I actually just had a conversation with a friend today and I told him about the podcast and the topic and, and he was quite shocked. He's like, oh, um, it's an interesting topic, but I don't know if it's that, you know, um, that, that, you know, talked about like is it really an issue and I was like oh yeah and he was like shocked that that this is an issue and I think he's not on social media and so he's not on Instagram he's barely on Facebook um he's into fitness but you know not not for aesthetics purposes just to be like healthy um he's 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 he's, he's not he's always been like fit um but doesn't by any means have like a bodybuilder body, but he was just, you know, kind of surprised that this is even an issue. So it is interesting kind of like what's out there and like whether it's talked about or not. Personally, I don't think that it's talked about enough. Yeah. And I think that in, in, you know, with women, we are so used to being open and honest about how our, we feel and the vulnerability side men, you know, I don't want it to like be, you know, I don't want to just say that it's, it, it's very like sexist, but, but I think what with men, it's, it's be, being able to open up and being able to share about their struggles, um, is a, a little bit more of a challenge versus how women are just brought up to be more open and honest about how they feel. So um, I think body image is definitely, you know, the body in, image in general for men is an issue, but I think men might fear that they worry that they'll be like ridiculed or that, you know, they, they, they have to put on this macho man or this, this, this image to the world that they are confident and they have to look a certain way. And so a lot of things get internalized and, um, you know, have, they, they end up having these unreasonably, um, expect unreasonable expectations that you know are are not are quite unfair in my opinion but then also social media so if you're bombarded with you know these images of the perfect physique um you know i feel like that can really affect um men just as much as women um but what i'm curious about is that um it's it's not just about weight and this is something that i've you know after reading a lot of a uh, lot of uh, research as well and like magazine articles about this and blogs i've noticed that it's not just about weight or like it could be other things such as hair and height um you know the way they look physically not necessarily weight so could you speak a bit about that and whether you think that that's also the case yeah for sure so one thing that you said that kind of stuck out to me and I found interesting is the person you were, you were talking to uh, um, didn't seem to think that the men's body image is an issue. Mm. I, it's interesting that I actually found a paper somewhat related to this that talked about that men are kind of more likely to be in denial about this type of thing than women are. <laughs> there was actually, I, I was trying to like, as you were talking, I was actually trying to find it because I, I, I couldn't recall it but if i recall correctly the conclusions they came to was something like men seem to just uh they rate they rate their own attractiveness higher than it actually is <laughs> so <Wow. that's> what, <laughs> yeah. but then it's like like what you said a lot of men it's like deep down they kind of like hate themselves <laughs> like men are very like i i, I don't want to generalize too much but very like feel like you have to put out a very good like outwardly uh image and you have to it's like you almost have to be like you're assumed to be strong on the outside and you're assumed to put out like uh the ideal even if like internally you just feel like you're you feel so bad right like uh, men ha and another interesting uh paper that i looked at also said that the rate of men being dis uh having body image issues has gone up by about, it about tripled in the past i think like 20 or 30 years which i don't think that's because it's become any better or worse i just think that's because men have become like more uh it's become more of a thing to be okay with i think it's probably gotten a little bit better than it used to be mm. uh i think men probably have uh, more ability to talk about it. And it's, you know, because stuff like depression and mental health is not as stigmatized as it used to be. Yeah. So we, you have, it, it is getting better in that regard, but 
what else were you asking me? I forgot. I forgot well, what I we were to know, like, because you spoke about kind of your, um, your journey and your kind of growing up in fitness. I mean, men's body image problems kind of often stem earlier in life from earlier life experiences, um, or feelings of being not enough or less than, um, and it's not necessarily, um, just purely like from the perspective of weight loss or like how you know much body fat they've got on but it could be related to also hair and how their hair is with like even with things like male pattern balding and losing your hair or graying hair um and height yeah. um yeah. you know i i know from you know i don't know if he's comfortable with me sharing but he's my brother so i can talk about it <laughs> um he's always struggled with height um you know, feelings of inadequacy because he's not as tall. Um, yeah. And he's, you know, he's a very good looking, smart person. And he's, you know, a lovely human being, but he had those insecurities of, you know, not being able to be tall. And um, so I was wondering if you feel like this is the case, you know, from your own perspectives um, with yourself and maybe the, the kind of clients that you speak to that are, are males, does this come up? Oh yeah, men are definitely way more heterogeneous heterogeneous in terms of their hatred for themselves than women. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. Like like you said, it's but also men are more likely to hide it. Like they're more likely yeah. to try and like if they're too, if they feel like they're short, they're more likely to wear lifts in their shoes and then feel like you know not tell, you know if someone tries to call them on it, be like no no of course I'm not wearing lifts in my shoes, bro, right? Or like you know, to buy supplements to try and uh, fix the or to help their receding hairline or like you know. To, to, to take steroids because they have a body image issue, right? Men are more likely to, do, there's research on all of this, that men are more likely to do all of these things. And I, and I think it largely stems from also the fact that men are more likely to hide them. And, mm. you know, uh, in, in the industry and, and, and speak, speaking from personal experience, I think that there's just so many things that you can, a guy hate, like people, I, I've always heard women talk about it, that they're like, I have, you know, specific spots on my body where, you know, they'll say like, I have, you know, body fat here that I don't like or whatever. Right. And I think that's a very common thing for men. It's like men can find a problem with everything about themselves, but they won't tell anyone about it. Like there's something wrong with my hair. There's like, I can't grow. And like, I can, I can list right now, all of the things that men have problems with off the top of my head. And I bet you that a lot of women wouldn't even think about these. So one of them that's actually really big is I can't grow a big and full enough beard. A lot of men, especially now that beards have gotten more popular, not being able to grow a, a beard is considered like a big problem. Right? Yeah. My hairline is, is, you know, important. You know, even if your hair is, you know, my hair would probably, I got just long hair and I don't really do anything with it. But a, a lot of guys would have a problem with that, right? A lot of guys feel like, I remember when I was younger, I wanted to have long hair for the longest time, but I didn't have the confidence to actually grow my hair out because I thought people would judge. I thought other guys would look at me and be like, he's a pussy because he's got long hair or something, right? I was stupid, but like these things are, these things are everywhere, yeah. right? Like I don't, I, you know, obviously the thing about, you know, being muscular enough, uh, being thin enough, you have to be both lean and jacked, you have to, which you all know is very hard if you're not taking steroids. You need to be, uh, you know, you also need to be strong. You need to be lean. You need to be jacked. You need to be strong. You need to be tall. You need to have good facial hair genetics. You need to have good facial bone structure. You need to have good, uh, a good hairline. You need to have, you know, it's just, it never ends, <laughs> right? When you go down this rabbit hole and it, it's men, I think, marketing toward women in a purely aesthetic way is not working very well anymore. But in terms of for men, it's still working very well. It's still, it's still happening. And it's, it's almost like the only way that it happens. And in, in the fitness industry, like when's the last time you saw an ad or you saw like any piece of, uh, anything out there in the fitness industry that was targeted toward men that was centered around wellness. I can't even think about it, <laughs> but I see that. I see that all the time when it comes to, and I think that's a real shame too, because obviously one of the most important things that we can get out of training is the health benefits, mm. right? 
And I think it's a real shame that, uh, is it that more men just don't care about this or it's that more men do care about this, but they're just afraid to really say it. That is such a good point. Um, I'm, you know, the way I approach my clients and my coaching is very holistic and, um, for sure I've had, you know, maybe in, in three years of being a coach, um, I would say I've had maybe two men who were interested in, you know, the, the, the self-care and, um, you know, the, the more mental health aspect of, um, the wellness journey rather than just purely wanting to lose weight, um, or get muscles and get jacked and things like that. So I definitely think that, you know, that there, there needs to be a shift also with the conversation and the marketing because yeah, everyone is still kind of, um, still marketing to men only focused on physical aspects and, and, and looking a certain way and um, the picture of what it means to live a healthy lifestyle is still very much the same kind of jacked uh, perfect bone structure looks like an actor or like perfect hair perfect everything uh, I think it's funny model kind of thing I, I think it's funny when you say like the, the ideal active lifestyle or whatever it's funny because I, I immediately say I'm like what does that look like for for men what does that look like for women and um, it's like the answer should be like the same but the mental image that you get from a guy it's like there's this shirtless guy with a six-pack yeah. like w with like perfect bone structure like working out outside and the for for women like what do you you get, you get an idea of like someone just like doing yoga or something, right? Like, yeah. that's, like the, that's just like the image that comes into your mind. And the woman looks like she's like just a normal looking girl doing yoga. And the guy is like this like Greek God who's like yeah. shirtless doing it. And I, yeah, it's yeah. weird. It's weird, but it's like these images are like ingrained into our mind by just, I guess, life experience and uh, whatever. Yeah, like I love that, you know, like a Greek god or like a sculpture of like David or something. It's like, it's so true. And I think even um, there, and, and what kind of that brings me to kind of like the next point, which I think would be relevant is that double standards that could come up with, you know, men versus women, where women are. I, I, I want to be very sensitive when I say this, but like, um, it's okay for a woman to sort of, no, I wouldn't say let herself go, but like with the, the different stages in a woman's life, you know, with, with hormones and pregnancy and the changes the woman's body makes naturally, it's almost accepted. But then, then when we look at the male's perspective, they are not the same, like the, the, the standards are different and the, the men are held up to a very unrealistic standard that they have to continuously maintain throughout the entire, their entire lives. Um, and which brings me to kind of the issue that a lot of men suffer with, you know, food issues, emotional eating, binge eating. And it's again, something so not talked about as much as it is in women, then there's this double standard. So like you've got, you know, the, that a guy has to look like, an, you know, amazing and always have, you know, this, this perfect physique, but the woman is allowed to have these seasons and changes in her body. D do you think that's true? Like, do you think that there's this double standard? Well, maybe to some degree. Um, so I think with, with women, it's, it's kind of assumed that, you, you know, women go through changes in their body through pregnancy and through aging and through uh, menopause and post-menopause and all this stuff. It's kind of just assumed that a woman's body is going to change as, as they age and that's okay and that's natural and that's normal and that's understood. But for men, it's not so natural. It's not considered so natural or so normal or so understood. It almost seems like there's two, there's only two camps of men and it's either you, you're perfect or you don't care. You're perfect or you don't care. That's it, right? And that's like, yeah. right? It's like either you are, because if I say I'm into fitness or if I say I'm a trainer or something like that, they'll be like, yeah, well, you're not, you're not so jacked. <laughs> you're not very big, right? Like why, why aren't your biceps bigger, right? Or, and then the only other option is to say you just don't care. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, it's, it's tough. I, I don't know. Um, I don't know if there's a double standard because I don't, I didn't do research into 
into this. The, the double standard I do know that exists is that men tend to take themselves, um, they tend to be more critical of themselves in both a positive and a negative sense. Like they tend to overvalue their own positive worth and they tend to undervalue or like they tend to really get down on themselves in a negative sense, uh, more so than women. That was the one study I found. I, I, but just speaking from personal experience, I... I think I think one thing that I also found interesting is men tend to uh, going the other way is men tend to be seen as more attractive when older by women and men tend to find younger women more attractive. So like uh, kind of talking about it from the other perspective, yeah. like I, I think of men almost that's like a double standard where men get the long end of the stick. Right. There's a lot of double standards all over the place and they that's go true, in both yeah. they, they go in both directions, right? Yeah. Like, I think I read something like women actually consider like men, men don't reach peak attractiveness until they're in like their forties or fifties. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, so I think there, there's, I think really uh, simplifying it to like one side wins or loses in the double standards is like, it's, it's both ways. And in, in an ideal world, there really wouldn't be any double standards in yeah. either direction. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. But, but we don't live in an ideal world. And, you know, I, I feel like I, I am a lot more, a lot more secure in my own uh, personal body image than I used to be. Like I'm comfortable like bulking and not, and then going to the beach without my shirt on. And I'm comfortable like, you know, cutting and wearing like a baggy shirt and not really caring too much if it makes me look bad. I mean, I do care if it's in the sense of like, I'm not going to post a picture on Instagram where I look terrible. Obviously no one's going to do that. Or I might, I might just approve a point, but other than that, I wouldn't. Yeah. So I think the double standards thing, they, they go both ways mm. and we, Hey, it's, it's something that it's just, it's just part of being human. It seems that like hating yourself, <laughs> hating yourself is part of being human. And once we realize we're all in the same boat, then we'll stop it from sink. We'll start trying to stop it from sinking. Yeah, no, that's true. I think that we've got to remember that we are really just, you know, all kind of in, in, in a similar place and um, all fighting internal battles that we don't know about from each other. But um, I think one thing that stood out for me in this conversation is that um, one, you know, it's, it's not talked about as much to that there's, there's many different aspects and many different facets to this, this conversation. Um, but one thing that I wanted to kind of go into quickly is to address like the fitness industry, because being in the fitness industry there, and from a woman's perspective, um, there is still this, um, very big pressure as a coach to look a certain way. Um, oh, yeah. and more so from, from the, I think now it's more about having, you know, the perfect bubble butt um, and the tiny waist and the really sculpted arms and like to be a certain body fat. Because I think with the rise of social media and, you know, th the amount of coaches that are having a platform now to share and to help others, I think there's also... Um, that like general population now think that the only way to be fit is to look like a bodybuilder or a physique competitor, bikini competitor. And I find that there's a lot of women that are just general population and just normal folk going to the gym, starting to talk about cutting and bulking and, you know, a fake cutting phase and um, having, you know, a very intense training plan that looks more like a bodybuilder's training plan. Um, so is that, do you think that kind of affects, because I know it affects women, but I would love to know, like, from the fitness perspective as a coach, because um, I'm sure coaches are listening to this as well, how, how you manage your own expectations um, being a coach in the fitness industry and um, the fact that, you know, it's just assumed that you need to look jacked. Yeah. So, so I think that's the, the main problem with that is, the more that is, it's kind of promoted that you need to look like a bodybuilder to be fit and that you need to be this, there's a specific standard of, it sets up people with unrealistic expectations, but it also increases the barrier to entry, which is a really bad thing because we already have, if we're talking about the United States, 
even though I'm in Canada, if we're talking about the United States or North America as a whole, and I think most of the most first world countries have a, an obesity problem, right? They have a problem where excess adiposity is causing an increase in a lot of different types of diseases. And one of the best ways that you can combat that is through getting in the gym and training and through improving your nutrition. Yeah. And I think when you, the only image that's put out there is, or, or the most prominent image put out there is, is a very, for a lot of people, I'm not saying it's unattainable because I, if I, I've, I've seen this argument before. If someone says it's unattainable, they'll be like, well, you're just not working hard enough. And, and it's like, okay, li- look, not everybody wants to dedicate 100% effort toward the gym. I get, not everybody wants to, you know, and it's, it's, it's for lack of a better term, it's complete bullshit to say like someone is unworthy of training just because they don't want to put their entire life into yeah. it. Yeah. Right. Like it's, it, it's, you should not be stop. If you're like a coach and you're putting out that type of message, I think you should like, honestly, you should get out of the industry because yeah. it's not for you, bro. <laughs> but like, yeah. but seriously, like it, we should be encouraging more people like the type of client who I really like to go after and who I really want to have is the clients who need it from a health perspective and they can really get actual lifestyle benefits through health and exercise. And I feel like putting out the image of the ideal is all there is if you're into fitness and if you're not working for the, if you're not working toward this ideal, you don't even deserve to be here is it's, it's such a negative Thing to even have out there. Again, I don't have a problem at all with bodybuilders. I don't have a problem at all with training to look as good as possible, but mm-hmm. keep it under it, it, like keeping it under the, the, the lens of this is not the only thing there is to fitness. This is part yeah. of fitness, but this is not the only thing that there is in fitness. Mm-hmm. Right. And I think that's the, that's the thing where we have the most just in my experience, that's where we have the most room to grow. And that's what we, that's what, that's one thing that really should be more biased toward, toward getting people just to get to the gym and train for, for the health and fitness benefits of it. Yeah. Yeah. Just get people moving. Um, and yeah, you know, aesthetics is, we all know that we want to look better and feel sexier and, and just more confident, but I feel like sometimes, you know, that is like the side effects, uh, weight loss or fat loss is the side effects of, you know, finding the kind of exercise that you enjoy and that can you, that you can stick to and that makes you feel good. Um, not just, you know, following a program just because you're going to look like, you know, so-and-so or you're going to eat in a certain way so you can look like, I don't know, Thor, for example. So I think, yeah, yeah you're right. That, that, that whole, and, um, you know, barrier to entry and like how a lot of, I'm sure it's the same for males, but like with, with women, it's, it's, you know, feeling like they, they need to start look a certain way, even before they step into the gym, even before they even start, they feel like they need to have a certain amount of body fat and look like a certain way. Um, and I think what I want to kind of share with the listeners is any kind of tips that you have for males if they do struggle with you know feelings of inadequacy or not feeling like they're ready or good enough to go to the gym or um, even just day-to-day insecurities of I need to have a six-pack to be healthy or I need to you know have jacked biceps in order to be strong like any tips that you can share with the listeners that they can put into practice to kind of manage these thoughts? Yeah, I'm thinking specifically actually about specific clients I've worked with or just overall. So the first thing I would say, if you don't feel like, if you don't want to go to the gym, you don't have to go to the gym. There's Mm -hmm. more ways to exercise than just going to the gym. Mm -hmm. Um, I think everybody should be working out and I think everybody should be lifting weights. But again, it should not be a barrier to entry if you don't want to lift weights, right? You can do yoga, you can do running, you can do a variety of things. I think like, honestly, most people who I've like trained or talked to, it's kind of like, they tend to gravitate back toward weight training because it's like the best, it's, it really is the best bang for your buck. But again, it's not the only way to improve your health and fitness. So the first thing I would say is, don't stop 
sorry, stop putting up boundaries and stop creating barriers that are preventing you from getting started. Start as small as you can possibly can. If the first thing you can do is literally just take a step outside your door and go for a walk, that's the first thing you do. If the first thing you can do is just do some push-ups over there, if you can't do push-ups, just hold a plank for like 30 seconds. Just take the first step is just so important. Like a lot of guys feel like, you know, I know everything and, or if I don't know it, it doesn't matter. Yeah. So, you know, it's, but realize that like, no matter how much you know, it's not, you're never going to know. Like you're never really going to know. Everything I'm talking about here is just pontificating. I don't know. She does, Alessia doesn't know. <laughs> I, we, neither, we don't know. Like it's, yeah. it's not, there's no answer. There's no like cut and dry answer. But what I, what I do believe and what I have experienced is that I, it, the issues do not disappear just because you get more jacked. You don't, you don't automatically, there's not like some point, there's not like some mountain that you're climbing. And once you reach the top of that mountain, you're fit and you're never going to feel bad about yourself or never have a body image issue ever. It, it just doesn't work that way. Some of the people with the highest rates of body image dysmorphia or body image issues are guess who? the fittest people in the world, yep. the people who look the best, bodybuilders. Mm -hmm. Those are the people who have the highest issue. And, and here's another thing. If you're getting your advice on fitness and wellness directly from that person, that's going to make you fucked up. <laughs> you don't want that. That's that like, seriously, so true. you're setting yourself up to always hate yourself. If you're only training because you want to look better and you want to achieve some ideal that you might not have the time to do, you might not, you might not even want it. You might like at the end of the day, it's just, if you're setting yourself up in that mentality and you're putting yourself like that is the top of the mountain. And if I, if I can't make it to the top of that mountain, I'm falling off the mountain. Mm. It's you're setting yourself up for failure. And there's so much more to fitness. There's so much more to strength training. There's so much more to lifting weights and just health than, than that, that I think simplifying it to that is, is a waste of time. It's a waste of your effort and you're making yourself, you're just make needlessly making yourself feel bad by doing that. Yeah. I think that, that mini rant, is the biggest thing I would say to any guy who's, who's struggling with this issue. Another thing is talk to your bro friends. You would be surprised with how supportive that a lot of your bro friends are mm. or even random people on like Reddit or forums. If you just are honest about how you're feeling and you're honest about your situation, you'd be very surprised with how supportive that they are because it's, it's almost like a novelty to have a guy actually care about this or talk about it. So where people, men are actually very supportive and very community oriented a lot of the time. And I don't know if it's necessarily like if, as soon as you make yourself vulnerable, it's kind of like this weird, uh, it's, it's this weird, like, uh, just thing that happens that when you make yourself vulnerable, it's like you actually attract the people who want to help you when you do that. Whereas like when you kind of like get conceited and like in a shell and you try and put out this appear outward, thing of like, I'm perfect when everybody knows you're not, it just tends to like attract all the douchebags who are even more like hypercritical of you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, I, so I would say be willing to just go out there. Cause like, honestly, to me, like the, the most macho thing is to just go out there and not, and, and put out something on uh, Facebook or Instagram and just not give a shit if people are going to judge you negatively and just say, this is where I'm at. I need help that's macho that's what's actually macho and what is actually like respected it to me is having the is is being being okay with asking for help i love that i really love that and i think actually you know i'm sure you 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 know you've you've come across this post that jordan syatt just recently posted on his instagram um if anyone doesn't know who jordan syatt is you need to you know definitely go and check him out he's an amazing mentor coach um but he just posted that he went and saw a therapist and it was just incredible that he had you know the the confidence and the um you know, the humility to just say, I, I, I go to therapy and it's okay. And we need to talk about it and we need to be honest. And I love that. Um, and I think that that, that point that you made just now about sharing your struggles with, you know, your bro friends and, um, the people around you kind of brings me to that conversation that men do need to have with 
their friends, their wives, doctors, family members, strangers on the internet, on a blog, yeah. whatever that yeah. may be. But as long as they have that opportunity to talk it out and to put it out there and share, um, I think then it just becomes less like stuck in your head and more like, what, what can I do to move past it? And what can I do to, you know, address it rather than just pretending it's not there like this elephant in the room or putting on this macho kind of facade, which we know is just a facade. Um, and really being vulnerable and open and honest about the struggles that they have every day. So, um, yeah, I think men do need to um, find their own safe havens and safe spaces to speak about this. And I'm really hoping that, you know, the conversation becomes more mainstream and we can see a bit more about, you know, how to address it with our own clients, because I definitely find that the males that I do work with do struggle with opening up and sharing about how they're feeling. And sometimes they're even afraid to even even just um, share about the, the struggles that they're having within the program and, and because they want to appear like they can stick to it and they can do everything right. And, um, but now I'm off on another tangent. So I think one thing well, is for sure that we've learned that the talking about it is what's important. I think we got to get actual, like, as you're saying this, I, I was thinking like, no one's going to care what I think, but yeah. like, I, I need, like, there, there should be like, there should be bodybuilders out there talking about this stuff. I like the people who, mm. like the, the people who are like the most highly like recognized physique people who have like the best physiques, like they need to talk about this, this stuff because men take, uh, men just take men who are more jacked more seriously. <laughs> That's just how it is uh, yeah. in this, in this industry. Uh, so like, I think going out there and having, having more people who are, are more prominent, just, uh, talking about this, but then on the other side, there's some people will go like, "Oh yeah, well, well, you're rich and famous and have the perfect body, so what do you have to complain about?" And it's like that's the whole point, right? It's like being rich and being famous and having the perfect body does not make you feel better about these things automatically, and in a lot of instances, it makes you feel worse because you feel more hypercritical of yourself. Mm. Yeah. So I I think just getting that out there and and showing like you know, the ideal is not real. There is no ideal. It's it's just all there is, is us. We're all here. We're all the same. We're all living this. We're all living on the same planet. We all have different experiences, respect one another and treat each other with compassion when needed. And don't, uh, you know, assume that other people are, don't assume that other people are more or less perfect than you just based on like arbitrary things. It, it's not, it doesn't work that way. Uh, you need to, I don't know. We, I feel like, the, the main way to overcome this is just having community support and having more people, having more people who are just honest and willing to go out on a limb. Like you said, Jordan, yeah. hell yeah. Mm. Talk about it. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Yeah, no, I think that's the biggest takeaway um, to kind of bring everything to a close is really to just, you know, have that compassion for yourself, but also just realize that you're not alone and that you can go out and you can ask for the help and, and talk to the, your loved ones around you. It's, it's, you know, it's a safe space to do so. Um, talk to your mom. Yeah. Or talk to your mom. <laughs> well, exactly. actually, I, your mom will I, always be supportive. <laughs> I can't, I can't even talk to my mom about it because she's too supportive. She gasses me up too much. She's like, oh, you're perfect. Everything you do is what if I talk to my dad, he's like, like, oh my God, I was literally talking to my, my, I, my dad finally got on like a video chat for the first time in his entire life, lives in a different country than me. And we're talking and he's like, man, your arms are looking pretty small. <laughs> and I'm like, cool. And it's because we're all talking there with like all of our, like we're there with my wife's family and it's like, I'm a personal trainer is like my job. And my dad just, he's like, he's like, man, your arms are looking small. Oh, <laughs> my dad is 70. <laughs> well, he's, you know, he's probably from that generation where, you know, you just suck it up and you don't talk about it. Oh, of course you, he was, he was in the Vietnam yeah. war. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. There he goes. Yeah. Like things like this is just trivial for him. I'm sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, well he would. Th he would think. <laughs> 
Yeah, no, for sure. And I think that the, the whole conversation needs to happen. And, you know, out there, if you're listening, Jack bodybuilders, you, you be honest with, a, with the rest of us, you know, pure mere mortals here. Um, and if there's, if there's nobody else to talk to, like I'm in my inbox is always open. I'll talk to whoever, seriously, if you message me and you're just like, I don't, I don't know, whatever you say, as long as you're not like, uh, trying to like solicit me for illegal activities, I'll, I'll talk to you. <laughs> love that that's that's awesome um yeah that you can you can be so open and and you know open up your doors like that um open door pause policy um yeah. so where can we find you um where can everyone kind of if they want to get in touch and they want to kind of see what you're putting out there and tips and tricks how can we find you again just to reiterate yeah so i'm on instagram as my main thing where i probably do the most posting uh, it's uh, johnny reps fitness j-o-n-n-y underscore r-e-p-s underscore fitness and also on facebook it's johnny reps fitness and i have my podcast strength for all as i mentioned in the beginning um those would be the main ways to get in touch with me i don't use twitter i don't use tiktok yet and i do have a youtube channel but it's just getting started awesome and what kind of things do you talk about on your podcast so I have, I talk about a huge different, a, a huge variety of topics on my podcast. Like I have, I have a podcast where I talk about uh, I have strength train. I talk about strength training. I talk about just normal people who have normal experiences in fitness. I talk to uh, about weight loss when you're you're very overweight. I, I talk about, I even had my most recent podcast. I had my one friend who's a brain cancer survivor on, and he's also has diabetes and and hearing loss so he has quite a few things going on and just kind of talking about the role of fitness in his life and kind of we des actually on the podcast we designed a program i kind of like st talked to him and i was like hey I'll, I'll make you a program like on the podcast based on what you're telling me and then i kind of like made that program and i gave it to him and if anybody wants that program just shoot me an email and i'll send it to you it's kind of like an inner promotional thing i did for that podcast um so I, I talk about so many different topics just in related to I, the topic of the podcast is called strength for all is the title. And it's really about the main vision I had for the podcast was I, I think that strength is not just physical mm -hmm. and it's mental, emotional, it's everything. It permeates our life and that strength is kind of like, it is for everyone. Strength training improving your physical mental emotional well-being is is for everyone and it's something that we should all partake in and that's that's the that's so like i could talk about just about any topic on that podcast seriously and relate it to fitness everyone has an experience everybody has a fitness experience and everybody is alive and a human so yeah i love that that's amazing and that's amazing story about your guest who um you did the program for that's super cool um and i love that strength for all that you know it's just it really is available to all of us both mentally physically um emotionally in every aspect um well look thank you so much for coming on here to um ch just chat about this because you know it is one of those things that it's not talked about and i think that we just need to get the conversation started and i'm so honored to have had you here um and I will definitely leave the links for his Instagram and Facebook and all John's um, links that you can get in touch with and listen to his podcast as well. And yeah, so thanks for listening, everyone. And I will see you or talk to you in the next episode. Cool. Thanks for having me. Yeah, anytime.